Las Vegas. This is NAB Show Live, produced by Broadcast Beat. Beat. Here's your host, Jeff Adams. We are talking, talking internet streaming radio, and I have a good friend here uh, with me, Paul Camp. He is the VP of Business Development at Backbone Networks. What's going on, Paul? Not a whole lot. Actually, there is a lot way going too on. much. Way too much, right? <laughs> way too much. You've been sleeping good here with Dennis? Sleeping okay. Sleeping okay, but it's a little bit uh, different. The you, air's a little bit different here than back home. I know. It's, it's very dry. Yes, very dry. Are you, do, are you doing any late nights or anything like that? Or are you being smart? Um, generally being smart. Which, you know, you're on East Coast time, so you came here. I mean, I, I, one night I, uh, I stayed out too late, paid the price, right. came in, did my thing. I was just dragging, and then okay. I I had the old man syndrome. I went to uh, I went to you know bed at seven o'clock. Yeah. And I got up at five, and I said, oh, I can make the uh, the Golden Corral breakfast buffet. <laughs> so I was like, I was I was happy about that. So, anyways, Paul, uh, I got to tell you about Backbone Radio. Um, it's something. It's a product I've been using uh, in my broadcast for probably what? It's two two years. About, two, about give or take two years. About two years, and uh, I I said you know. The world needs to know more about this platform because uh, it's it's helped me tremendously in my workflow uh, of how I do because I do a I, I do a video show but I also do a radio stream as well and this this uh, this is just an amazing product uh, Paul let's 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 get in the the nuts and bolts of this great product okay we'll, we'll, uh, so let me talk a little bit about Backbone Radio and how it operates it, to, a traditional um, radio station you usually have uh, two studios at the radio station, one for the producer and one for the on-air talent. And in the production booth is usually a fairly expensive piece of hardware that does radio automation. Um, and uh, then you, uh, you know, where the producer loads it up with uh, all sorts of liners and clips and notes and all sorts of audio to make the station sound fresh and alive. And then in the more on the other booth, you know, is the on-air talent like like you. You push the button switching between live and automation all the time. And uh, what we do that's a little bit different is we take the automation, we put it out in the cloud. Let's, 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 let's talk about, let's, let's rewind a little bit. Let's, let's talk about how you came up with the solution. I've been asking a lot of people uh, when I interview them, explain your history in radio and w w what you did before and when you guys, you know, George and all you guys came together to come okay. up with a solution of why you came up with this solution. Okay, well, a uh, couple of things. I usually start with George because of, He's got the longest history in radio. Um, he grew up in radio. His dad was the uh, chief engineer for the RKO Radio Network. Real radio people know what that is. You know, he had WOR and W, uh, what was it, uh, in Boston. Um, I'm blanking. But he also, uh, before that, he started WAAF in Boston. He did WRKO in Boston. Okay. Which uh, he did a lot of uh, music back in the 60s. So George grew up in that environment. Um, George and I met at uh, Prime Computer, you know, because uh, I actually come from the computer industry, um, and we always uh, stayed stayed close. And uh, he went off and started uh, doing some work with Formula One um, uh, through Rich Cherney, okay. um, who was running a company called Telecast Fiber Systems, which is much more on the video side right. of things. Um, uh, when they were done doing some of those efforts with, um, with Formula One, Rich said, uh, what should we do now? And George says, I want to do radio. So George built, built the product similar to what we have today, only structurally different, where um, uh, the concept was to sell software. And uh, again, two client applications, one for the on-air person and the other for the producer. And, and uh, they were trying to sell it running on a piece of Linux hardware to radio stations. So the radio stations had to have a Linux engineer and they had right. to have all this. And I became involved because I was working at Sun Microsystems on uh, cloud technology and the business models around the cloud. And uh, they said, our stuff works well, but we're having trouble because people aren't technical enough to run some of the components. And I said, why don't you change it to a service and take that Linux server, put it in the cloud, run it yourself, and just charge a monthly fee. And that became the genesis of this. And oh, the early 2000s, um, they, we started investigating how to make that work. Right. Um, but we've been doing this in anger for about three or four years where um, we've taken that product and, as you know, we've added additional products yeah. that 
augmented even, even further. One of the big challenges that um, uh, we ran into, though, was um, the licensing of music. So a lot of the calls that we would right, get. right, because uh, you know, uh, you know, Live three sixty five just went because right. of the, the new law. I mean. it, well, the 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 change law. If you want, I can walk you through a little bit of that that background. Um, uh, so if you if you do a what they call a non interactive stream on right. the internet, like a Pandora, yeah, um, they pay a certain rate that's set by the copyright um, royalty board. Right, and um, uh, so they're paying a certain rate and. All the stations that operate in that fashion need to pay that rate. And there are different categories, like there's NPR, non-commercial stations, and there's a college section and everything. And uh, um, the royalty rates, if you look at Pandora's financials, Pandora, though they're generating revenue, is still uh, um, losing money because of how much right. they have to pay in royalties. Um, uh, so that's, that's been a challenge. And so what we've tried to do is find a way to make that work for us, so one of the calls that we would use, we typically take, similar to Live 365, was, okay, I get your radio product, it runs well and everything, but what about the licensing? And our terms of service is, was the opposite of Live 365. We always felt that you're a broadcaster, act like one, clear right. your rights. That's not our job. Right. Now, what is our job is, is we can help. Um, we can help with the reporting. Well, let's let's get into it. Let's let's look at the screenshot here. Now you take your iPhone, you take your iPhone, your yep. any phone, and you can plug in. You know, so if you know you had a guy on a sports field, you can basically use your LTE. You yep. know, your Correct. and he could plug in a uh, uh, an additional microphone into his right. his and phone and just broadcast straight from the football game or exactly. whatever he might be doing, the red carpet events or whatever. Exactly, or an iPad. Some some a couple of people are starting to look at using the iPads for that. And, and the benefit for that of that is you can be back in the studio, he can be out remote, and you're high fidelity audio point to point. It's like uh, watching ESPN and you got studio to studio quality audio versus right. the, the, the dialing where you hear the squishiness, you know, where they're squishing down the sound into the eight kilohertz range. And that's, ph that's phenomenal. I mean, because it's, it's literally, uh, you know, because, you know, back in the day when you started doing, you know, uh, radio and stream, you had to take all this stuff with you right. and set it up. And now, literally, you could have your reporter there. He can bring his little mic and his little thing, right. plug in his right. phone, and go. You're going to go live on air, and literally, you go live on air, and you give the broadcast. You don't have to worry about anything. Absolutely. The broadcaster can be a broadcaster. He doesn't have to worry about exactly. being producing and doing all that great stuff. So that's fantastic. Exactly, exactly, and, and it's um, uh, it's what the some of the podcasters are interested in because they want that studio quality point to point such that they don't have to all go to the studio all the time. And right. It really kind of um, uh, reinforces our tagline, our message, which is your station anywhere. You, know, you can set up production really easily because you know, we do it through the cloud. Yeah, and I was talking, this is a great solution too. I was talking to a CEO of a radio station in North Carolina uh, two weeks ago and the, the biggest thing is like they're trying to uh, you know, sell the time. But the biggest yep. problem they're running into is, you know, it's that mentality you have to come into the radio studio to make right. it work. Right. So, you know, I kind of shared him with this uh, this platform. He's like, really, you can you, you can do this? Yeah. So literally this opens up if you're, you know, if you're selling time on radio and you get a talk format, uh, especially on the weekends, like a lot of, yes. you know, like Cox and Clear Channel, they still sell time on the weekends to specialty shows locally. Yes. So, I mean, this is a great solution for filling that. You could have a guy in San Francisco, you could be in the Orlando market uh, and do your right. show and right. and uh, fantastic. They don't need to come in the studio. Yep. All right there, and you have the producer producing the show, right. you know, right from the either the studio or they could just say, I don't want to go in the studio right. this morning. I'm going to stay in my underwear at the house right. and uh, I'm going to produce the show because I don't feel like going in. <laughs> it's phenomenal. <laughs> well, in, in fact, um, uh, back to who we're trying to appeal to, we're trying to appeal to a lot of the freelance producers that might want to, uh, you know, uh, do some um, one-off uh, production of radio shows. They make they can do three, four, five of them remotely. That's it. They don't have to be, you know, local, you know, and just limited to their, you know, physical location. Um, it makes it very easy, even in a, a, a close-in physical location like we're from the Boston area. You know, those radio stations are actually scattered. If they need to move from one radio station to another. That's a commute time. Well, it's, it's, it's great, too, because you've challenged. I mean, this is great for podcasters, too. But see, yes. people used to always make, you know, I guess my show became a podcast after I did it live. Yeah. But I don't go back and edit anything. So right. what's, what's, it stays, it stays. But th this is really challenging for 
podcasters because, you know, Howard Stern said a couple months ago, you know, he was making fun of podcasters. Right. He says, if you want to learn broadcasting, you go to a radio station and you learn it. But this gives people the ability right. to, uh, well, go, I'm going to go fix that in post. I'm going to go yeah. edit that. This gives right. you the ability to be in a live environment right. and really practice your craft. Even if you're starting up, and this is great for college education. Right. This is great for the, even to the, the pro level. Right. Uh, this is, I mean, this is a truly amazing product. And the reason I say that, I, I have it in my hands. I use it when I do my, my broadcasting and I've used the phone systems. It's worked flawlessly Right. and I've had no hiccups. I haven't had a chance to use a Lucy yet. I was going to say, we've got to get you the co-host component. Right. We'll do right. that after the show. Okay. Right? Um, as, uh, as you get uh, 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 ramped up on more of the high fidelity audio um, you know, it'll make it easier for you to bring in guests. And let's, let's get into that too. They say, well, where, where can I send these feeds? Uh, you know, with you guys, you guys created a tune in channel for me. Yep. And then in the cloud, so uh, I think I got two minutes, so I'll explain it the best way as I can as a broadcaster. Right. So, so in the cloud, basically, uh, when, you, when you're not live, you know, normally you used to have to run a computer to keep reruns going. Correct. So now, literally, you can just program in your playlist in the cloud. Everything's in an EP, uh, MP3 format in the cloud, and your station is cloud in the cloud 24/7, going the way you program it. So you can run commercials. You have to have a computer running. It's like that's it's right. fantastic. All right. Well, that's that's the real benefit of moving the automation to the cloud. When you're not broadcasting live, you no longer need your internet connection. You can shut down your Macintosh because your your automation's running up in the cloud. In fact, we become like the IT shop. We, we become your IT shop for your radio station. Yeah. Right? So we're monitoring that stream 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. If anything happens, we usually, you know, get a get a text saying, "Hey, you're getting chattiness on your disk drive." Well, yeah, that's for us to handle. We don't want the the producers to have to worry about that stuff right. and having to buy bandwidth. All our stuff is is prepackaged in a in a simple fashion, and at least that's the objective. Well, once again, uh, Paul, uh, website. Uh, Two ways to get to us, the easiest way is backbone.com. Um, and uh, uh, on our website, you'll see all of our products. We have a, a product drop-down section. And um, uh, I guess I'd like to mention, if you really love it um, and you'd like to try it out, uh, we have 30-day free demos of most of our uh, products and, and technologies. Um, you know, Click the button, fill in the form, and, and uh, uh, we'll get you going. Awesome. Well, Paul, thanks for your time today, stopping by here at NAB Live. Uh, we're going to take a short break. We'll be right back after this.